why Jack Black is one of the only actors you can't replace. Billy. You. Billy, we've already told me off. Let's move on. You're tacky and I hate you. Okay, you see me after class. Movies have never been bereft in con <laughs> men and hustlers, characters who manipulate those around them in order to fulfill their wants. On paper, School of Rock is a movie about a con and identity theft, a man posing as his roommate in mm -hmm. order to use school children to help him score a $20,000 payout. And thanks to Jack Black. Bro, if you were to just describe that movie to me like that, it sounds so like shady. <laughs> I mean, that that's essentially what the movie is, but <laughs> oh man, it's not how the movie like plays out. I mean, it kind of does. Or wait, no, I, no, they didn't win. But um, <laughs> that's a fu that's the funniest description I've heard of that movie. Black. This con became a celebration of otherness and potential. Through the actor's charm and wonder, the lines blurred between whether we were watching Dewey Finn or Jack Black. Now, if you have some time between face-melting solos and gut-busting drum fills, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel in order to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Let's get rocking! Director Richard Linklater has Damn. no clear line of filmmaking. He directed experimental pictures such as Waking Life and teen classics like Dazed and Confused. But in 2003, he helmed what would become a wildly celebrated comedy that appeals to both kids and adults, thanks mostly to its lead, Jack Black. One Bro, honestly, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this, like, I think School of Rock is like one of those timeless comedies. Like you can watch it at almost any point and be like, oh, this is good. I don't know why because, well, actually it's like the key thing in this movie isn't surrounded by like the tech. It's more surrounded by music. And when you put the, the music as the like the forefront thing that everyone's trying to get good at and you take out all of the technology there's no social media in it. There's no uh, like internet like presence really in this movie. It's more of just instruments, musicians, and you know, just school. One common thread in Linklater's work is his dedication to realism. From his debut Slacker to the wonderful Before trilogy, he's eschewed surrealism in favor of believable characters and circumstances. When casting School of Rock, he wanted real kids playing real instruments. Mm -hmm. Every actor is also a musician in their own right. This takes the movie one step further than the pantomiming performances other films of this ilk usually trek. The screen yes, because in general, you'd be hard pressed to find an actor that is also a really good m musician. Um, and especially at the, like the kid level or, or like whatever everyone else was, um, at the, you know, whenever they, he did the class or whatever, like, I think I remember watching, like, was it like the interview or something? Maybe it was on the DVD. Like when he first got introduced to all the kids that were, that were going to be in the class, he was like taken aback by how good at like the instruments that that they were playing because Jack Black is like he's like a comedy guy an actor guy and he's also a musician he's he does a lot and trying to find like actor slash like an, a kid an actor that is also good at musicians is I would say really tough too but, I mean, I think with this movie, they did a great job. Screenplay was written by real-life friend and former neighbor of Black, Mike White. White read the scripts Black was being offered after the breakout role of High Fidelity, and White read the same cliched roles of Belushi-esque party animals and knew his friend was capable of more. He knew there was a unique tenderness to Black, one that revolved around not just Black's love of music, but the way it could transform people. You've been focused so hard on making it, you forgot about one little thing. It's called the music. When the movie begins, we learn that Black's character, Dewey Finn, has been leeching off his roommate and friend, Ned Schneebly, for years. After a chance phone call, Dewey poses as Ned in order to take a job as a substitute. To begin, he is mostly going through the motions. More than anything, he treats it like a babysitting gig. Just mm -hmm. a box to tick before he can collect the checks. He tells the students he's hungover. You know what? I think this movie also kind of falls in line of that 
what was that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he has to like was it Kindergarten Cop? <laughs> Anytime you put like a polarizing, well, polarizing in that. Anytime you put a polarizing character in like a classroom setting with a bunch of kids, the shit that happens, it I don't know, it's just so funny. Because here you have like uh, Jack Black, you know, comedian and musician as a substitute teacher, and in Kindergarten Cop you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is an actor and a bodybuilder. So, and you put that person in a classroom setting, and it's just it's so funny because you know ki kids, what are kids gonna do? Kids are uh, notoriously known for like being, uh, what is it, truth like hurtfully truthful or something. I forgot the phrase or whatever. So kids are just, like the jokes that kids can say are are hilarious. And that when a kid says something and it's so funny, they don't mean for it to be a joke. It's just it just so happens that what they say is hilarious. <laughs> and to just enjoy recess. Who knows what that means? Doesn't that mean you're drunk? <laughs> no. It means I was drunk yesterday. Even here, though, as we watch the cliched trope of the gruff adult who wants nothing to do with kids, Black is still somehow likable throughout the interactions with the more upper-class kids. In lesser hands, it might come across as manipulative. Dewey has only ended up at the school because he needs money to avoid being evicted. After overhearing <laughs> the kids play during music class, he concocts a plan to put a band together in order to win a battle of the bands and its sizable cash prize. Black is able to tap into an exhausted charm that is more Walter Matthau in Bad News Bears than Billy Bob Thornton's angry turn as yeah. the same character in the film's remake. What Black understands is the idea that these kids are not the problem. They aren't an obstacle in his way that yeah. he must overcome. They are simply an annoyance he must put up with until he's paid. That simple difference means everything, and it makes the plots shift into working with the children that much more believable. There's an... I don't know, I... You said the kids were like an annoyance that he has to put up with until he gets paid. I would have said the kids are a tool that he has to sharpen in order to get paid. I think I would have phrased it that way. I don't know. Infectious enthusiasm you can't help but fall in love with. And that's abundantly clear as he begins to dole out roles for the band. After piano prodigy Lawrence plays a few notes of The Doors, Touch Me, Black sings along and then stops him to say, Stop! That's perfect. You're perfect. Stay right there. There's a steady eye contact here, a big and broad smile that makes us feel safe. We immediately lose the thread that this moment is a manipulation. In the back of our yeah. minds, we may remember that he's only putting this band together in order to further his own ones, but in our hearts? We know he believes that behind these 88 keys, Lawrence is perfect. It carries on throughout the rest of the scene as well. He brilliantly places energy-riddled Freddy behind a drum set, and he coins mm -hmm. what every metalhead would subconsciously reference when they answer the phone. Hello, you've got a bass. Try it on. <laughs> Part of what makes just this segment of the film work is the way Dewey pivots to address every kid's want. After Summer yeah. discovers what a groupie actually is, Dewey immediately appeases her by promoting her to band manager. What is at Dang. first a means to keep her quiet becomes a genuine working relationship as the movie progresses, and it's inevitable end. It's also one. It's. I didn't even realize that he made with the groupie joke. <laughs> I didn't realize that how. I don't know. I don't think you could make that same joke today. <laughs> the whole groupie thing, and then she comes out. I. I researched and figured out what a groupie is, and I don't want to be that. <laughs> oh my god. And that was a... Why didn't he make a band manager in the first place? <laughs> like, why wouldn't you make the class president or whatever the, also the band manager? <laughs> Wonderful in its endearing honesty, even if that honesty stems from a lie. And for a movie like this to work, one based around deception, we have to love the deceiver. We sincerely love watching Dewey take care of these children. We are not given much backstory to Dewey, but thanks to the entire team here, what we are given is quick and efficient storytelling. When the movie opens, yeah. we see Black barrel through an eye roll inducing solo as the rest of his former band waits for him to finish. When yeah, with that little opening intro scene, instead of telling the audience what type of character Dewey is, the director chose to show what type of character Dewey is with the whole like long ass solo and, and shit like that. 
His stage dive falls flat and Dewey crashes to the floor. We know this guy. He's the band member. Bro, did he like really do that shit? Like, props, props to him if he really did that fucking thing. I, I mean, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I don't know. Maybe it was like a stunt guy that did that shit, but damn. To just dive off like a like a stage and just like belly flop on the ground. Like, jeez. Who can't read the room. He wants the crowd to experience something only he can. And also, what the hell is this? We know this guy. He's the band member who can't read the room. Like, what is this? What phone is this? Oh my god. I mean, yes, the, the vibe they were going for in this movie was like kind of dated, you know, like the Nokia cell phone type days but like this it wasn't an end gauge like what okay it, oh my god it actually says nokia like what i've never seen this type of phone where it's like hot dog but you flip it up like what why am i seeing this for noticing this for the first time like when i saw this in the movie i was like okay it's just like a screen and they're just texting <laughs> what is this it's got clothes style font object and what is this insert <laughs> what the fuck is this and it's a document it's not even a text he wants the crowd to experience something only he can really see but in black we still love him part of that is his relentlessness as a master of physical comedy black has a perfect understanding of how his body moves yeah. and works his eyes go wide his smile stretches for miles and his weird shanty dance mixed with power stance somehow becomes enviable throughout the entire movie we're treated to dichotomic scenes of yeah like back in the day there was like th these specific comedians that took physical comedy and like stepped it up a level um who like chris farley jack black uh jim carrey and who else some degree maybe robin williams and steve martin yeah there are a lot of really good like physical comedy uh, the comedians that just did their thing back in the day. Encouragement and trickery. Freddy, that was awesome. You're rocking, but it's a little sloppy Joe. Tighten up the screws, okay? When singer Tamika confesses to Dewey that she's nervous about being judged for her weight during her solo, she's quickly reaffirmed by her teacher. It's these tiny slips from exploitation to unabashed avalanches of compliments that only someone like Black could pull off. And credit must be given to Link later in knowing the power he wielded with Black. When they wanted to use Immigrant Song for a small sequence, everyone mm -hmm. involved knew how hard this would be as Led Zeppelin was infamously standoffish in regards to their music. So Link really? later had Jack Black film a plea from the climax scene stage in order to sway the band. Lords of Rock Led Zeppelin! Lords of Rock Led Zeppelin! Grace us with your mighty love! We see here the blurred line between Black and Dewey. It's easy to imagine our fictional proxy doing the same thing. While some actors fill their roles with subtle nuance and gentle transitions, Black is a rally car. He quickly yeah. snaps gears from role model to just another one of the kids in every sharp turn. Part of that abrupt... It, it's kind of crazy because in that sense, he is a lead by example type of leader and... You can only like respect a person that does that. Uh, lead by example. This stems from his background in the alternative comedy scene. For a lot of us, Black might always be the farmer slash devil of Mr. Show with Bob in David's Barnhouse. Bro, what is this? I've never even seen this. Musical, but the ability to move so deftly was always there. Evident in that sketch alone as Black transitioned from meekish farmer to sin-encouraging demon. It's a skill he's mastered throughout his career. <laughs> when Black began Tenacious D with guitarist and fellow comedian Kyle Gass, they alternated between opening for Tool and small comedy festivals. It's a large canvas he's painted upon because people seem to genuinely love being around the actor. Throughout the entire movie, he lifts those around him wanting each to be a metal god just like him. We can tell through Black's spastic performance that he's not looking at the same world we see, and he desperately wants to share this with us. You're a rock star now. 
All you gotta do, you just gotta go out there, just rock your heart out. People are gonna dig you, I swear. Black and by proxy Dewey is forever the kid drawing pentagrams into a spiral bound notebook. Yeah. He daydreams about riding dragons over rivers of blood with an axe guitar hybrid simply because the words sound so cool. In different hands, Dewey Finn would have been at best a lovable loser. But in Black's hip swaying shuffle and wailing falsetto, we have a metal god using their deification to inspire. Let us know down in the comments below some other metal icons from your favorite movies. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and while you're here, why not poke around the channel to watch some of our other videos? Bro, School of Rock is just one of those movies. Like, it, imagine School of Rock with some other comedian. It's really hard to, to imagine that. Like, could you have done it with Robin Williams? Maybe you could have, because he's like, I, hasn't he done like some sort of like comedy music stuff in the past? I don't remember. Maybe, what if you did it with Jim Carrey? Like, School of Rock with Jim Carrey. Would it have came off the same? Or just some other comedian that, that also is into rock? I don't know. It's just really hard to imagine anybody else besides Jack Black doing that role. And I think he pulled it off awesomely. Like, I still love that movie. That's a goaded-ass movie. <laughs> Definitely, dude. But, no, I like this video. This was awesome. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, all right? So, uh... Another banger from Nerdstalgic. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Peace.